Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Fassen and uh, today we are going to talk about a sugar molecule called uh, ribose. And uh, we are doing that because that will help uh, your skin to be more vigorized, more plump, more um, younger. And um, ribose is something that you really can't live without because uh, that is um, the backbone of uh, the energy that you have uh, in your body. So it's the backbone of something called uh, ATP, which is uh, adenosine uh, triphosphate. And that is uh, the energy that your body is using. So uh, how can you uh, use it for your skincare? Well, there is a, a company called uh, Oskia Skincare here in, in London, and um, they are making use of this um, sugar molecule called uh, ribose. And um, they say that um, when they, uh, they refer to um, some tests that have been done with a cream that had a um, 0.5 uh, percentage of uh, ribose in it. And they, they looked at, um, I don't know, a lot of women. I think it was 50 women or something like that. And um, they tested it and they found out that um, over a month time or something like that, they saw that um, the amount of wrinkles uh, went down and uh, the length of those uh, wrinkles that persisted uh, became shorter. And overall, uh, the skin had um, uh, a much better look and a more um, shine as you would like it to have because as it's a bit more plump the light will uh, bounce off your skin uh, differently than if uh, your skin is uh, more sacking and not so bloated if one dare say that um so yeah how can you use it uh, yourself well um the reason i looked into this at all in the first place was that i take it as a uh, supplement uh, and I can make a, another video more in detail about why I do that. But um, I realized that as I am already taking various uh, amino acids uh, that I use on my skin as well, I thought, well, now that I have this ribose, uh, can't I just uh, use it on my skin as well? I mean, why not? So um, I did that and I looked it up and found these uh, various um, studies that uh, tell you uh, what it actually does. And yes, I did feel that on my skin as well. And I was actually quite surprised uh, to find that um, after just a couple of days, I could see a difference, particularly when it was uh, tried on uh, someone else, which is a, a little older, but where um, the skin uh, responded really well. Now, uh, what happens is that um, the ribose will um, go through your skin barrier and will go into the bloodstream. And from there on, we must assume that it is taken up by the cells in the same way as if you have been eating it and it will be supplied through the blood uh, to uh, your cells and they will use it to make um, energy. Now, the molecule is so small that it will penetrate uh, your skin. Uh, and uh, one thing uh, I like to use it uh, together with is uh, the vitamin uh, niacinamide. So that is uh, vitamin B3. Now, we already know that um, vitamin B3 is something that is uh, soothing to your skin and it has a, a calming effect on your skin and it is uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, the reason I started to use the uh, vitamin B3 together with the ribose is that uh, if you look uh, at how uh, your body is producing ATP then uh, the backbone is um, ribose this sugar molecule but uh, you also need uh, vitamin B3 in order to uh, produce ATP in your body so it kind of like made sense that if I can use vitamin B3 on my skin together with ribose and both of those things both of those ingredients will uh, sink into my skin I will in theory, provide uh, the the, uh, the basis uh, the basic uh, element for uh, how uh, my skin uh, and my body in general will uh, produce uh, ATP. So if I add vitamin B3 to my skin and uh, together with the ribose, I will uh, give an ample supply of those uh, ingredients directly where I um, need it the most or where I would like it. Uh, it to help directly with uh, the wrinkles. So apart from uh, taking it as a supplement, I take both of the, uh, I both take uh, vitamin B3 and uh, ribose as a supplement. Uh, but um, and I will make uh, another video uh, about that. But uh, putting it on the skin and it sink in through your skin barrier that way, it should in theory be possible to uh, deliver those elements directly uh, to uh, the skin uh, and the skin cells so that they can take it up and they 
make this uh, energy so that all the processes in general can work uh, better because all the processes in your body requires uh, ATP. Now, uh, how do I make it? Well, you can just take uh, the uh, ribose and then just uh, make a, a watery uh, solution uh, out of it. Uh, but I uh, wanted to add a little bit more than just that. So the cream that uh, they spoke of uh, in this um, you know, this company is talking about, the Oskia skincare company is talking about or referring to, is a 0.5% uh, solution. You know, that is the concentration in the cream that they are talking about. And uh, I will make a link to which uh, cream they are or the, uh, the study that they are talking about. And uh, Oskia Skincare, they have uh, some products themselves that uh, contains uh, ribose as well. It doesn't really say uh, what the concentration is, but they are talking about this study where it's a 0.5% um, uh, solution, concentration. So what I did was uh, I made my own uh, concoction and um, I already had uh, ribose and I buy it from a company called uh, Bulk Powders where I buy various uh, amino acids from uh, as well. So apart from the ribose, uh, I buy uh, other stuff there, but I, uh, I don't have anything to do with them. Uh, so you just take, um, what I decided to do was, I knew that they had made uh, the concentration, which was a 0.5, um, but uh, I thought, I just take a couple of scoops in uh, some water and see how it goes. If it becomes really sticky, like if you're making a, a standard sugar uh, solution, it will become sticky on your skin and you would not really like that. So I just thought, okay, I take two scoops and I will put it into uh, 50 milliliters of uh, water. So I took a container like this, which I normally use when I'm mixing stuff like that, and it, it is just from some sort of uh, travel kit that you can buy in the airport and various places. Uh, so I put uh, 50 milliliters in here, and then uh, I added it to kind of like make my skin sticky because the sugar concentration was a bit higher and how does that sort of sugar actually work compared to if it was um, standard sugar. Uh, I've never really put standard sugar on my face as such. Uh, so yeah, I have tried a, a sugar scrub years back. That is not something I use anymore. But um, so yeah, uh, I have not uh, put a, a sugar uh, solution on my face as such uh, to leave it during the day. But um, talking about uh, this ribose, which as I say is a sugar, uh, it does not give that um, sort of sticky feeling that you might uh, expect. So uh, what else uh, I added was that I added the uh, vitamin B3 and uh, what I added was um, from uh, the Swanson and I use this brand and that those are the ones that I take as a supplement as well uh, and I took four of these uh, pills and they have uh, so that would be like, like these ones here so uh, you just open them and then you pour out uh, the, the powder and that uh, would be equal to uh, two grams in uh, 50 milliliters and therefore it will be uh, like equal to four grams in a uh, hundred milliliters. So that would be a 4% uh, solution. So the ribose and the vitamin B3, it will be in this solution here. Now it looks a little bit milky and uh, the reason it does that, uh, or a bit like it's opaque, as you might see. And uh, the reason for that is that I thought well, now I'm at it anyway. Shouldn't I just add a little bit of uh, hyaluronic acid? And uh, I used uh, the hyaluronic acid that I normally use when I make my uh, other serum. And uh, that is from uh, the company Yarrow or Jaro. And um, they come in these uh, capsules. So again, you just uh, open them, these small uh, capsules here. You open them and then you just uh, pull out uh, the stuff. And uh, for that, I use there is 120 milligrams uh, in each pill. And uh, I just thought if I take five uh, of those, that will be easier to calculate with because that will be uh, 600 uh, milligrams. And uh, if you take uh, 600 um, 
milligrams and you put it into um, the uh, 50 milliliters, that will mean that you would have um, 1,200 uh, in the 100 milliliters. So that will kind of like give uh, this sort of um, a bit more um, serum-like texture because of the hyaluronic acid will um, be a bit more gel-like. But it, it just means that when you're pouring it out in your hand, um, which I can just show you how to do that, um, not how to do it because I've used to know that, but how it will look, it will have a kind of like, it's not like water, but it would be a little bit easier to control than if it was just water, which you maybe can see. So I just did it on my hands as well. Um, so it's easier to to work with. So one thing uh, I normally do is that I use um, the amino acid um, carnitine uh, on my skin. So I thought instead of, uh, in this case here, uh, I can mix it into the uh, solution. So that again would be much easier instead of having various lotions and potions that I need to put on my face. So uh, in this instance here, I thought I would try and put uh, the um, carnitine, the amino acid carnitine uh, in uh, the solution as well. And uh, I normally have a 2% solution of uh, carnitine that I use on my face and I use that in order to uh, combat oiliness. Not that I have a lot of oiliness going on, but um, if you have that, that is something that is really good to put uh, on your skin. And also it is a uh, humectant. So that will, just as the uh, hyaluronic acid, it will draw in uh, moisture uh, to your skin. But you will not become uh, kind of like sticky uh, in your face. So uh, what I did this morning was that I used this uh, solution here uh, on my face. And if you would like to, uh, you can just leave it and then uh, there will be some sediment at the bottom and that will be something that is called a magnesium stearate and that is something that is um, in all sort of uh, cosmetics and uh, it really makes um, like if you have a, a pressed powder that would be uh, one of the things that you would put in a, a pressed powder because it will make the powder adhere to your skin uh, much better. Now uh, magnesium steroid is not uh, water soluble and therefore it will uh, come to the bottom and if you don't want it in the solution you can just let it um, come to the bottom and then you can decanter the uh, solution but really it does not uh, make uh, a lot of a difference if it's in there or if it's not. It is not uh, water soluble but it is uh, fat soluble so it will um, in theory, it will mix uh, if you're using a, a fatty cream or uh, with the oils uh, on your skin. But it, again, is not something that is um, anything that will uh, change uh, the um, solution or how it performs. Uh, in this case here, it's just uh, you can leave it in or you can uh, decanter the worst out if that's what you want. So uh, what do I have on uh, today? Today I have uh, this uh, serum on and uh, on top of that I just simply took uh, what I normally do and that is I use my oily cream, the uh, La Creme Fluide from uh, Ambrelis and I mix it with uh, the uh, La Roche-Posay, the uh, Anthelios SPF 30. And uh, this is not about diluting the sun factor, uh, the SPF, it is just about making it easier to um, distribute over the face. So use the amount that you would use if you would not uh, mix it with anything else. So this is not about diluting it. So that is uh, what I have uh, on my skin today. I don't have any setting powder. I don't have any sort of anti-shine thing uh, on my face. So this kind of shine that you see on my face is uh, what uh, comes off from using these uh, products. So my skin is not sticky. It is, a, it is nice and um, very moistened, uh, but it's not sticky and it's not dry. So uh, I would say that the um, humectants in here, which is the, the hyaluronic acid and the uh, carnitine, works in order to bring in uh, the moisture and the uh, ribose uh, really brightens up the skin and gives it kind of like an even uh, colored uh, surface and a more uh, of a plumpness uh, to your skin. And um, in general, it seems like uh, if you are I do take it as a supplement as well, the uh, ribose, and that will make uh, all the processes in your body work uh, more optimal because all those uh, processes, they need uh, the uh, energy that we have in our body, which is the ATP. Now it says here uh, at the back that if you are below uh, 16, uh, they don't recommend that you're using ribose. 
you don't need ribose if you are below 16 or in general if you are young because you would have uh, plenty of it in your body anyway so um, yeah this is for more uh, mature skin uh, and that will um, should help your skin be more uh, bouncy and more uh, youthful and i'll put a link to uh, the study that i found uh, below so that you can uh, read it for yourself and i'll give a link to the uh, oscarskincare.com as well where you can read a little bit more about uh, their products where in some of them they are using uh, ribose and uh, yes they are from what I just saw, rather uh, pricey. And uh, would I buy their products as such? No, uh, I wouldn't. I am very happy with uh, this uh, more uh, budget-friendly uh, version. And it is easy to make, and you can find uh, ribose in uh, these sort of uh, supplement stores or in um, fitness stores and stuff like that. And it does not cost a lot. Uh, as I say, I use um, bulk powders because that is where I found that I got the most for my money and uh, i think they might only deliver here in england but i'm not quite sure but in general it is not something that is super super uh, expensive so it should be easy to um, make a concoction like that um, at home and you can just uh, mix it with water if that uh, if you don't want to use any of the, the other ingredients but uh, i would say that it's a good idea to mix it with the uh, vitamin b3 because those two things uh, together are something that is really needed in order for your body to produce uh, ATP. So yeah, that was just uh, the latest. And uh, what I normally do, uh, just to squeeze in here, uh, I don't use uh, tap water as such. I use um, the water from uh, Vichy. And that is a Vichy Celestine, and it looks like this. And that is the exact same water that you will find in the spray bottles uh, with the, the Vichy uh, name on it, uh, produced by uh, L'Oreal. So yeah, you can see a video about that, I will link to it up here, as uh, so you get more an in-depth uh, explanation about that. And uh, one thing uh, to say is that I just make my own little spray bottle here, and that is just with the uh, Celestine uh, Vichy water. And uh, if you're using a hyaluronic acid or any sort of um, humectant, uh, during the day it could be a good idea to give it a little bit of a mist with uh, water, and uh, particularly if you are in a very dry climate. But uh, I do it though that I am in, uh, in England. I don't overdo it uh, because it is... Um, it's usually very not dry here in England. Thank you for watching and if you would like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe to the bell and do all those things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.